Hi everyone. So after my last video about Q browser, quite some people got interested in what browser I'm using currently. So I decided to make this short video to show you my current browser setup. And I'm also going to use this opportunity to incite a lot of hate and to call some people to unsubscribe from my channel by showing you the desktop environment that I'm using currently. You ready? One, two. Yeah, I'm currently using KDE Plasma and please don't hate me too much. Every time I kind of get to the point where my setup gets consistent and I don't have to set up anything anymore, I kind of get bored. So I switch something else. And by the time my next video goes out, I'm probably going to be using something like DWM or Window Maker. So <laughs> let's get to the point then. Uh, the browser I'm currently using is called Ungoogled Chromium. And this is a browser that is um, developed by a guy called Elliston. Basically, he takes Chromium, you know, Google Chrome, Chromium, whatever you call it, and he, he removes all the integration with Google. Basically, all the Google botnet, he just cuts it out. If, you, if you're really interested about how exactly he's doing it and what exactly is removed, you can read this GitHub page. I'm going to link this down in the description also. But basically, to keep it short, you can't log in with your Google account. There is no safe browsing thingy that checks all your links that you open. There's no telemetry functions. And one thing that is kind of annoying also is that you can't really install extensions from Google Store. As you can see here, there is no option to install. There is no button that says add to Chrome. And the way I'm doing it is I'm using this website called crxextract.com. You just copy the link, you paste it here, you push OK. And then what happens is you basically get this window, just prompting into installing this engine. It's, yeah, I guess, I guess it's kind of annoying to do is, you know, it's extra step, but I don't mind because it's, you know, you only install extensions once really, and then you just add them very rarely. And considering all the advantages that the browser has, I don't really mind. One of the reasons that I mentioned in the last video was hardware exploration, and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by that. So I'm going to open htop, and let's just pin it so it's always on top. And I'm going to open up Cube Browser, and I'm going to open random video. And then let's just Let's just put this one, I mean, it's just random video. So as you can see, it just jumps all the way up to 150. And wait a second. Yeah, it's 1080p right now. And you're going to hear the fans in a, in a moment. Let's just, let's just wait for the fans. There we go. You can hear that they're really going full force, just blowing all the air out. And the CPU usage, meanwhile, is 200. I think there's no denying that there's it's not really a very comfortable way to watch videos. So let's just open the same video in Chromium, which is by the way compiled with VA API acceleration. And you can see the usage, and it's basically here 16% CPU. And oh, it just got very dark for some reason. Yeah, so you can see it's much more comfortable. You can't hear the fans almost. You can hear them somewhat, but that's mostly because of simple screen recorder because I'm kind of screencasting right now. But overall, it's much better in terms of acceleration. So other stuff that is not present in Cube Browser is obviously those extensions that I mentioned, this H264 FI that basically serves you videos in a format that is better in terms of hardware acceleration. There is a CVIM, which adds um, Vim key bindings, so like O to open a page in the current tab, capital O to op open page in new tab, D to close the tab, U to get it back, so you know, all the good stuff. I remapped uh, some bindings to kind of resemble Q browser. I also added start page as a search engine, which is pretty easy to do. One more thing that I would like to mention is uh, I'm currently in Arch Linux, and there's two packages in AUR. Basically, there is a binary package which is outdated, and it also does not support VA API yet because, as far as I know, the support for VA API hardware restoration was only added a week ago. So, basically, from version 72.0 something something, and currently you have to compile it from source. You can also install the binary package, but 
Um, I'd like to warn you, and Elliston also warns that those packages are not a part of the release. So like, he doesn't have any control over it and um, it's basically maintained by another user. So yeah, I guess that's it. That's all I want to talk about. This is a short video. As usual, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.